The architectural overview will begin by reviewing the C54X architecture. This is now a well-known architecture, characterized by two input data buses, the C and D bus, which feed a MAC unit from and contains two accumulators. In the 5RX, we call them accumulator A and accumulator B. We'll see how that changes in the 5.5x. We also have one 40-bit ALU, which may be split into two 16-bit ALUs. To provide addresses for the C and D bus, we have two address generators, X and Y, which are supported by eight auxiliary registers, which contain the addresses or pointers to data. There's a barrel shifter on the 5.4x, which can be as any number of inputs, C and D bus, accumulator buses, etc. The 5.4x also has a single 16-bit output bus known as the E bus. The C55x extends the 54x capabilities. In the 55x, we have two MACs, which are fed from three data buses, C and D bus, as we had in the 54x, plus the B bus, or sometimes called the coefficient bus. The outputs of the MAC go to four accumulators instead of the two we had in the 54x. We now call them accumulator 0 through 3. The 55X has two ALUs, a 40-bit ALU, very similar to the ALU on the 54X, plus a 16-bit ALU, which will facilitate Boolean operations and additional bit manipulation in parallel with other MAC and ALU operations. The 55X has a barrel shifter, again, similar to the 54X's, but it drives two output buses, the E bus and the F bus. Because of the additional buses, we have now have three address generators. The auxiliary registers, which support the address generators, have AR0 through 7, as did the 54X, but an additional AR register known as the coefficient data pointer, and its function is to drive the address generation for the B bus. Because the 5x is a 24-bit address machine, and the AR registers are 16-bit registers, there's an additional set of 8-bit registers called the X. AR registers or extended AR registers. A 24-bit address is found by concatenating the 8-bit register and the 16-bit register and at the same time maintains compatibility with the AR registers on the 54X. And finally, there's an additional set of general purpose registers T0 through T3. These registers are, can be used in many different ways. The C compiler authors like them because it provides additional registers for temporary variables and uh, local variable manipulation, etc. C55X is similar in many ways to the 54X, but extends the architecture with additional buses and additional hardware thereby increasing the parallelism and the throughput. Let's look at the technical attributes of the 55X. New to this device is advanced power management, where we can have those portions of the device that are not required for the current operation be powered down. Additionally, a programmer can turn on and off something called an idle domain, which is nothing more than some portion of the hardware, say an additional Mac, that is not being used 
and therefore reduce power consumption. We have a scalable instruction length. What that means is that we have 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and even 40-bit instructions, which actually results in increased code density efficiency. For example, if it's going to take an additional byte to store a constant, rather than needing to add you know, a whole word or two bytes, only one byte will be added to a 16-bit instruction. So we will then have a 24-bit instruction, and code density improves. It's a faster device. We have additional functional units. We have some new instructions. We'll look at those later. We have additional buses. We have a new improved memory interface to communicate with some of the newer memory types. And for increased performance, we have an instruction cache. And we'll see later on that there are some advanced emulation techniques in the pipe for this device as well. The next slide shows a feature of the new tools. We have an online documentation. Here we are looking at a screen from the online documentation that displays the memory buses and how they are connected to the functional units of the CPU. This is simply an example to show how easy it is for a developer to have the documentation always present on the machine. 